you know what? We should all yeah, make yeah, a yeah. for this podcast. I found out what we're doing. Yeah, why, why, why aren't we? We can. Why aren't we? Let's get some snacks or something. I'm going to eat. <laughs> What's that it to me? Yeah, we can watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm white wrong. Yeah, I'm white wrong, though. I'm white wrong. Jesus Christ, yeah. I choose that. <laughs> <laughs> You are saving people life. Yo. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Wonga Gal the Podcast, your favorite food podcast. We're changing the tagline because my sister says she cringes when she hears it, so this one's for you, Brianna. Um, and so today we have some special guests with us. Some of me and Ashley's closest guy friends. Closest guy friends. I was oh. gonna say debatable favorite people. But wow. <laughs> um. So yeah. So introduce yourself, guys. Hi, I'm Brandon, aka Brandon. Brandon Stizzle. <laughs> yeah, my one name and it's Crystal. <laughs> Nemo Rebel, born the devil. <laughs> How long it took That's you to right. come up with that? That's answer the phone. Why? You yeah, answer the phone by saying me more rebel, born the devil. No. Rebel, born the devil. You may <laughs> proceed with what you're talking about. Oh my God. Lord have mercy. <sighs> Among others, sometimes it's me more on the telephone telling what they need. That's Very not that I've heard. Based on the mood, you understand? Right. And who is calling? All right, guys. Well, today, today we're going to be talking about, I think, something that is near and dear to the heart of Jamaica and uh, that is rum 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 and more rum um, and of course I would say that it's relevant because if you didn't know Appleton has recently changed the design of their bottle the reason I invited my friends here is because I feel like as a group they're like some pretty big rum heads and uh, so, I, so I, I felt it appropriate. That could be the case. Yeah. Before we start, I just wanted to give like a little Background. history mm-hmm. of like rum in Jamaica and stuff. So the history of rum actually does not start in Jamaica. It starts in Barbados, where it is speculated that the word rum was used for the first time. Um, and the oldest distillery in the world is Barbados's Mount Gay Distilleries, which opened in Shut 1703. Up. <laughs> Don't say <it. laughs> which, opened, which opened in 1703. Mount Gay, the whole mountain of yeah, Gay. Barbados and Virginia love Mount Gay. That's so. crazy. I hear Mount Gay is very good. Christoph, yeah, I know I did, you had it all I did try it all day still. It was yeah, good? No, it was really good. It was really good. And the rocks? Smooth? Slap. Smooth. Yeah. Very smooth. You say, what time Appleton? You make it feel gay. I don't know. We're not going to go so far. We're not going to go so far. That's what my engagement was doing. It was good. It was good. Then, but good. You, obviously, there's some kind of biases to that. For sure. Yeah, Ali Jones. But so, coming off of that, Jamaica has the second oldest distillery in the world, which is the Appleton Estate, um, that opened in 1749. So, in Jamaica, in the Jamaican rum landscape, we started producing rum in 1749. By 1893, there were 148 distilleries in Jamaica alone. By 1948, that number reduced to 25. And now in present day, there's only about five distilleries here. But of course, the quality and the quantity of rum has grown significantly. Um, it is statistically known that Jamaica produces the widest variety of rum in the world. So, I would say that although we are not the originators of rum, we are definitely the epicenter of rum. At least Caribbean rum. No, rum. We are the epicenter of rum. We we produce the largest variety of rum in the world and we have the second... I didn't know that. The oh, second that's... oldest distillery in the world. I know the word rum came out of Barbados, but yeah? actually, yes, yeah. that, that's a fact. Michael, I just said this. I was going to say, what oh, yeah, I said. was there a reason why it moved from 100 to 20? Yes. I think it had to do with just sugar and the demand for sugar. 
Um, cause remember, like sugarcane was like the big thing at you know at one point in time. Slavery. And then yeah, slavery. And then eventually, don't forget, it started moving to like beet sugar. So with the transition from sugarcane to beet production, which the Caribbean doesn't produce beets like that. Um, so I think with that, what happened was a lot of the sugarcane and rum producers, like people who owned the distilleries, I think they just eventually moved. So just, oh, okay. They just moved and, mm. you know, they no longer wanted to be in the Caribbean because of, you know, people, you know, place hot. You have to also understand that whenever, when the demand for sugar also decreased, other players came on board as well so when you have more suppliers obviously the demand for jamaican rum specifically it's gonna go down so if we don't have that much demand for rum itself then obviously um the number of distillers are gonna go out of business and but then you also have rise in demand as well because um i'm reading here where it says during world war ii whiskey was hard to come by and after much experimentation and attempts to produce a rum that would serve as a substitute appleton estate special which is one of the Appleton Estate lines, um, described as a smooth, light, and fragrant rum that proved extremely popular with Jamaicans was born. So Appleton Special was born out of the demand from World War II. So we have a lot of rise and fall, which, you know, Appleton Special was born out of that, but then the distilleries experience closure due to the fall in demand just the same. So different events just happened over the years that caused all of these things to happen. As you bring up Appleton Special, you know, that kind of segues into the meat of the matter of this conversation. Um, because with 2020 and all of the other things, the bad things and not so nice things that 2020 brought, it also brought a major brand change for Appleton. Um, they've changed the design of their bottles and they've also changed the Appleton special to Kingston 62, they've rebranded. So, fucks, fucks. I don't know, there's a lot of debate around the, the change of the design of the bottle. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I mean, for Upton Special. For anything. For, for anyone, because they, they yeah, change every bottle. To start with the Upton Special, I did not particularly like the, the rebrand. Yeah. Just it, to me, it looked a little. I don't know. The the it just look a cartoony or I don't. I'm not maybe sure. the one with the lion on the label. Okay. Yeah, just maybe I just some getting used to. I can't discuss but the this. thing is, yeah, I love bottle. I love the rebrand for the signature. For the other bottles. Yeah, for the other bottles for the signature. Mm. Now it's a curvy bottle with the cork on top. That just like that sexy. But otherwise, for the, <laughs> for the special, I don't know. It just it not. I just I don't get used to it yet. At least. But well, that's just me. Have any of you had Is the this? special as yet? Yeah, that's the new bottle. Have any of you had the special as yet? I'm hearing, well, I heard somebody on Twitter last week, they were saying that the special even tastes, a li- well, Kings on t- 62 tastes a little bit different from special. Different. Holidays. Like they were, they liked it and said that they thought it went down a little bit smoother and it's slightly mm-hmm. sweeter than what the Appleton special was, which... Yeah, and it, and it, have, it can taste the difference, which is a good really? difference. A good difference. But we can't really pinpoint exactly why it's still, because it was just literally one cup, one oh. glass, and we link double. You had it straight, or...? With like, Pepsi. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I actually have not seen the bottle, the Kingston 62. I personally yeah. haven't seen it in store either. They have it like, so the Kingston 62 bottle is yellow, and then... Cause you know Appleton has its own white rum. Yeah. The white rum one is blue. So I think the white rum. I think that they must the name Genesis before. Yeah, there you go, that one. Mm-hmm. Genesis. Yeah, yeah. Genesis. But as we said, it improved liquor, I guess, but not anything for the jump up. Like, oh my God, it's the greatest. But it because I know a lot of people don't like special because they've just. I guess apart from the brand hierarchy that it's created, like you know, it's it's like the, it's the, cheaper the lowest tier yeah, of all of them, and it's always been that way. But is it stigma? I don't. Is it is it just a stigma or is it? It generally also is. No, it definitely As opposed to what reserve yeah, and reserve, yeah. Mm-hmm. It definitely doesn't taste the same. It doesn't even taste as good as the signature. Yeah, same but that's just my opinion. 
Alright, so how do you guys feel about the new bottle? Like, well, Christoph already say it's sexy. It's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what, what, I, what I said from the first time I saw it is it looked like something I would see in a foreign liquor store. Like, yeah. It looked like it more appealing to like the internet. So would you say it looks like more of a premium alcohol then? Like a top shelf? I, 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 don't know if, I don't know if it looks like... <laughs> It looks like a like a Bacardi kind of like mm-hmm. a Bacardi kind of vibe. Like it mm-hmm. looks like some that belongs in a liquor store. Like a top abroad. shelf yeah. liquor store. Yeah. Well, I remember when it just came out. Like the feds are watching. <laughs> the feds are in the school. That is actually insanity. Uh, <laughs> wow. Michael, turn off your phone. Yo, turn it off. That's shit. Sorry guys, but I want to go back and open his Instagram and saw an ad for Kingston 62. So I put on it. Yo, COVID working hard. COVID working hard, but I put on working harder. Who wants the money? <laughs> Euros, pounds, US. Anyway, uh, I, I agree with Brandon said the bottle looks like it's going to more appeal to an international like, audience, you know? I feel like, and it sounds back, I feel like it's the white label. Like, I, I, I don't know what it is about the white label. It just draws my eyes to it. I don't the, know. White well, the white label? Yeah. Like the white show. label is like the white label. Yeah, for the signature. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh. so when, when it did just come out, like, my first reaction was like, I don't know. And this may, like, as we were talking about before, it might just be like bias and stigma and, you know, loyalty and allegiance and all those things. But I don't know. I just always thought that there was something very like unique about the old bottle like the old when bottle you, or when the you, version before this one the version before this one okay especially like when i was in america like i feel like you spot that it look exotic you, it look exotic and you know exactly what it yeah. is like there's no yeah. it doesn't look like anything else on the shelf Facts. and so i had the same thought too i was like okay so this new design kind of look a little bit more foreign yeah but is that a good thing or is it look neat like it look neat it for lack of a better term like you know it just look clean well i mean obviously there's a reason why they did a relaunch and they had a whole marketing campaign um but before i get into that i wanted to ask you guys we are what like 25 years old now we started drinking at 18 Um, (laughs) (laughs) we started drinking at 18 years old drink responsibly 20 for me, 2015. Okay, um, but remember drink. that the previous version of the bottle wasn't always how the Appleton bottles looked, and we never right. always had several different types. Um, what do you mean? The bottles that we had before these, that was also a new thing as well. But I can't remember when those became a thing because they even introduce the so special and reserve you said special was always before. the bottle that it was before but the others kind of looked different but i just can't remember when oh. those came in as well so my question is you guys grew up basically with rum styles um looking the way they look before this new version do you just think just like how we grew up knowing that the ger- generation below us is going to grow up knowing the new apple town bottle just the same and appreciate it just like that yeah i would say so mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's about being at the psych, the psyche of their mind as them grow up. So similar to how we love the older bottles, cause we grow up with it. Mm. The same thing probably happened. Why? Why not? Okay. I remember like before I started drinking, so obviously before eighteen years old. I don't even remember what the other bottles looked like. I just Bro. remember everything looking like just like the old Appleton special bottles, the the very tall, slim version. Um, Let me tell you how much of a novice I was at one point in time. During my gap year, I think, I did have a, what is that very expensive party that keep during Christmas time again? It is. No, I think it's out with a C. Utopia? Utopia. That was out with C. You, it, that was out with C. Utopia. I remember. Utopia. I, <laughs> I had, that was the first, like, quote unquote, premium, party. expensive party that I've ever went to and i didn't even go there as a patron i was a dancer and so you never really go so i never really go but like i yeah, didn't well, go she was there i was there and you know i got to enjoy the event um but i was working anyways and i remember on one of our breaks mind you i'm not a big appleton drinker i'm not a big dark rum drinker so 
it's not like I was, and my parents aren't either, so I never really know what was what. And I remember going to the bar, and I remember I said I wanted a uh, Appleton and Coke, and the man asked me which one. <laughs> and I was very confused. I was like, "What do you mean? I just told you Appleton and Coke. Like, what do you mean which one?" And he was like, we stood there for like a while and it's almost like him couldn't understand what I was saying and I couldn't understand what him was saying. And of course, you know, party and plays loud and blah, blah. So eventually I just said to him, I was just like, just give me whatever. I don't really care because I don't really want to act <laughs> like I don't know what he's asking me. And it was, I think it was after that party that I actually realized that there are so many different tears. That's because I was like, Zion, that's because Rona time, nerd. like. We would be going to. You said this was doing a gap year, yeah. right? So that was been when like parties were so like inclusive. Yeah. And Uber and all that stuff. Wasn't vodka the jingle? Yeah, no, and that's what I'm gonna say. Like, yeah. Well, not for me. But when they went no. to parties, apple, apple vodka. When they went to parties like that, they apple would only vodka have till Miss Cole had. They would only have the. Thanks. They would only have the the basic apple tan. Because like, apple tan special, yeah, they would give you exactly. I feel like you never even asked. You just yeah, said no, apple tan. Because when you said apple tan, the only thing there was no differentiation. As an, as an all-inclusive party, it's, it's just Appleton Appleton special. special yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's a cheaper so one. if you go up, where the bigger one then? Yeah, yeah, but right. well, no, yeah, we weren't going to the bigger one. No, but think about it this way. We used to go Uber every Friday night. It was so I'm pretty sure it was Appleton it special, was. but that was what we was drinking inclusive. It was. Well, was. And now I'm going to give you a touch of liquor. juice. But I'm getting what I said. Anyway, so back to the original talk. As it relates to the rebranding of the Appleton bottles, obviously there is an an entire um, thought process that went into it. So um, the marketing director of Jerry and Nephew Limited, uh, Marsha Lumley, she was uh, cited saying that the relaunch signals a steady charge towards a premiumization of rum, rums on a global scale. And that is what they refer to the new um, look as premiumization. So the poor man of rum again? Let me finish. The consumer palette has become much more sophisticated. Appleton Estates range boasts more some complex and elegant expressions which inspire us to both educate and ent- entertain on a higher level. This relaunch gives us the opportunity to illustrate Jamaica's rich history and geography as we re- reinvent our most iconic international brand to connect deeper with our existing consumers and appeal to new markets across the globe. So no, they're not excluding the small man who drink the Appleton special, but they're appealing to much more people. Okay. So just like what Brandon was saying, it strikes you as a bottle that you'd see on a you know a liquor store, a top shelf liquor, and that is them achieving their goal. They're going for premium top shelf look, which makes mm. sense because you know when you look at the bottle, it doesn't look similar, but it gives me a vibe of the fifty year bottle. Mm. Have you seen the fifty year bottle? I've seen it once. Like the new bottle have a, like the fifty okay. year bottle has yeah. always been very sleek. And so I feel like that's what they were trying to account? achieve. Why? That look like that reminds me of the new one. It's how it, 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 it looks like a mix of the the Hennessy XO. Well, the I'm with the guess on seven hundred. Yeah, that's what everybody said. Look like yeah. that. I'm with the guess. It looks like a mix of the Hennessy XO kind of slim. Four hundred and forty thousand dollars. That's Jamaica per bottle. Jeez. US, US five thousand. So when we drink that, do I take off immediately? <laughs> <laughs> literally put them up on a display in the yeah. air. When it, when, it, it, when it released... a special occasion. You're not going to drink that like, regularly. When it released... 500 it was, grand? It released in 2012 for, and it was known as the world's oldest rum mm-hmm. at that point in time. Because of how long it was aged. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was... There were only 300 bottles... Um, that were sold in 2012 and there were 500 left right. at the end of 2012. So they have a limit? Or, yes, yeah, there, yeah. there, there was, was a limit. It's not a thing that's just begun, you it, know. It don't matter what was happening at the time when we opened that it becomes a special occasion. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Okay. Facts. Appleton Estate Jamaican Rum, a global leader in premium rums, has announced its global relaunch to celebrate the brand's pursuit of excellence, but most importantly, its commitment to the highest international standards of rum production. Okay, so it's what mm-hmm. it's what Brandon said. It, mm-hmm. it, it is to appeal to yeah, but because Michael was saying that when he spoke about the palettes being sophisticated, is that the sideman on the road going to be ignored? so the cost is but the that's same not it. as 
it's a cost. The same. I've actually never bought the new one. I don't. I don't. I haven't noticed any cost. I don't think because somebody bought one the other day. It wasn't. It wasn't that more expensive. We bought one. Yeah, it was the same as the regular. But was in the supermarket, so we can't use that as a good judge. No, but if you had bought this the previous bottle in the supermarket, the price probably wouldn't have been much different. That's what we're trying to say. I know that the flask, the flask, the flask of Kingston sixty two costs the same as special. What special use it costs? See there. So you have this. Sorry, we should stop saying special. We have sixty two, um, signature, the reserve. I had the eight here on Sunday, actually. How was that? I am not a good judge because I don't drink red rum like that, but oh. it was present and it was on the Sunday, so mm. then I'm just have a cup, so I'm really have a good. But it was good. It's really good. It's on very the, smooth. It's really good on on the rocks, just you know by itself. I want to see what it's like. Um, I haven't had the reserve in a while still. It's one of the the signature. I've had the signature recently. I've had the twelve recently. I've had the twenty one recently. So question scientifically, when the rum age longer, it tastes. But what's the, what's the deal with all of that with the age of the rum? So like right? the aging thing is really like the twenty one. It just means the youngest um rum they have in they used to make that um the rum in that bottle is twenty one years. It's been aged for twenty one years. So you could have things that are older than twenty one. Could definitely probably have like a fifty year rum in that. No, but I'm saying does bottle. why does. Yeah. Yeah. I no, but what Michael is asking is what's the difference between that and aging something for the I think yes, the, the white more expensive the or the more flavor just gets stronger. Mm-hmm. Um it's more expensive because of time. Time is money and money is time. That's really all that it is. You should go on the Appleton tour because they actually explain when you have care long No, I'm I'm saying for liquor, time is money, money is time. I thought you were saying that generally. Can we actually go on the Appleton tour and you see them they kinda put it in different barrels? Yeah, yeah. All sorts of specific woods that the barrel have to use and you see how it's like evaporation. So you know when you consider the really interesting process. The time it takes for them to store all of these things for the length of time that it has to be distilled. Yeah, because one, two, external factors, natural disaster. Uh, it comes back to the same thing. Exactly. You have to be making provisions, especially if in a country like Jamaica, we're prone to natural mm. disasters. Uh, you have to make provisions and make sure that the facilities that you used to store all of these things are willing to, to preserve them. Termite, take up the wood. Why you no, think it's five thousand US for the, the fifty years? But it's not even that. Like alcohol evaporates so yeah. quickly too. True. Like that's why Christoph said the thing about the youngest because. I think it's probably like if you leave a barrel of rum to ferment for a while, it will like, before you know it, half of the rum is gone just due to evaporation Correct. because they have to serve, they have to um, store it in barrels that are breathable. So yeah. it can't be an air, if it's, uh, a, if it's an airtight barrel, it won't, yeah, it won't ferment. Ask, I was actually going to ask if them don't vacuum seal them thing. They no, can't. So. They can't. So when it evaporate, them can re. But that's the, the thing. That's what makes the the older rums more expensive because exactly. they will start with a full barrel. Too. But know. after twenty years, years, after twenty there's years, there's barely anything in there. About quarter of the barrel full. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. For the last rum. Yeah. Exactly, and that's what makes it more expensive, and it yeah. it would have soak up more of the I guess the flavors, flavors from the, the notes, woods and no, right the orange peel orange yeah, the and the cinnamons right. and the cocoa. And I guess that's why they mentioned the spicy fruit and the oak. Probably, you know, making reference to the type of barrel and all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is in reference mm-hmm. to the type of barrel that they use. I see. So, all in all, I guess we can say that we like the new design. I love it. Aesthetically, yeah. yeah. Honestly, the first time I saw it, I was like, hmm, not I sure was how I very feel. Skeptical at but first. then, um, instead of seeing just the picture that Appleton posted, someone bought the bottle and took a picture of it. So it was basically like, you know, seeing it in person versus um, the virtual image online. And it was just very nice, you know, and then I realized maybe Appleton just needs to have a nice little photo shoot. And the lion is a very good symbol, so I know it looks like something that belongs in a cooler. It looks like something that belongs in a cooler. Yeah, that's so cute. It looks like something that belongs in a cooler. And I mean, it's representative of a lot of things because they also mentioned that the the cork and the label around the cork gives you a history of where Appleton is coming from and how the rum is developed. It's mm-hmm. all, um, you know, a graphic image on it. Kudos, kudos. Yeah. So we're going to start going to something that's a little bit different now, and this is this is something of personal interest to me. So I have noticed. I mean. I'm not the biggest rum drinker, I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't know that rum mash up my belly 
<laughs> so I, I don't drink I'm, I'm not an you know I'm not a mature rum drinker but I remember like growing up and I was always very fascinated with like bartenders like I always told myself that when I got older I wanted to be a bartender not a bartender but I wanted to I wanted to get like I wanted to do a mixology course and I wanted to be able to like have friends over and like mix in different cocktails. Like I don't know for some reason that just seemed very rich when I was young, and I liked it. Like I liked that I. So I was always like enamored with this idea of like different cocktails, and you know, like you watch a movie and people go to the bar and then like fancy outfit and sip on with the cocktail and thing. And but so like growing up now and like being in Jamaica, I realized that. Jamaica don't really have a cocktail culture like we have a mixed drink culture and the differentiation between that for me is like mixed drink is just like rum and cranberry or like Pepsi and Appleton you know like it's just like you're just kind of haphazardly throwing two things and you're good yeah. Whereas like a cocktail, you know. What well, people go bar? People go no. Pe- people go that. to bars, you know. Of course they do, and they, oh, there's a bar menu. But I feel like, from my personal experience, I feel like more people are inclined to just getting yeah. like buying a flask, especially like men. Like they'll just buy a flask. Why that Jamaican culture? And yeah, rather than get like I must a agree. cocktail. Um, I feel well, like I guess that, that really and truly comes down to where exactly you are at the time because there are certain bars that you go to that you really and truly just don't feel like it's conducive to a quote-unquote cocktail i feel like all right for for me if i got tgi personally i would go to tgi for the purpose of getting a cocktail which is a long island i see or a musgrave possibly but if i go to a different bar like a jangas i'm just going to get like a buckle of rum and a chaser and drink it straight like that so me is it because it, it could be um dependent on where you go for you to order that was what you're getting it? no because i just feel like that's a very uptown king something like oh, i feel like the is. wider major like the the culture in jamaica is not to go out to a bar and get a cocktail rum and boom yeah it's but just is a, that, the, like, but is that because drink. most of the places that they go don't offer them mm, well that is what i'm at, like yeah, you know no, like but then, but then but then how, all right, so the reason why this became of interest to me is because I recently found out that, you know, the drink, the Mai Tai, mm-hmm. originated in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was like a big cocktail, so much so that it's reportedly said that Mai Tais single-handedly depleted the world's rum supply, supply <laughs> in the 40s and the 50s because people were just drinking it so much. And so the original recipe for the Mai Tai only featured Ray and Nephew 17 year rum. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, so we're big on rum here in Jamaica. We have this one drink that like the original recipe features Jamaican rum, but who the hell in Jamaica goes out and gets a Mai Tai? Nobody. I didn't even know at the first time I hear it as you talk really? right now. Yeah, no, I never hear about what's, what's yeah. a Mai Tai. <laughs> It's a very, very popular. You think like, it was a green tea? Any that type of TBH? I can't I think Mai Tai. So Mai Tai has rum, curacao liquor, orange syrup, and lime juice. So which part of the world drink it? Did you say everywhere? I feel like I've seen like, especially in the US. Single, I've seen it on every Mai cocktail, Tais, yeah. a menu, I, I, you know, different drink stops I've been to here. Like it's definitely gonna be one of the things that you see on the menu. It's like you know, you ever watch like Hawaiian movies and see like the drinks in those tiki cups with the umbrella, with yeah. the like, umbrella. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a mai tai. Is it, it almost got to the point where it was so popular that in movies they didn't need to say it was a mai tai because once you show that the tiki thing with the umbrella and the straw, everybody knew that it was a mai tai that they were drinking. Mm. And also over the years, people have obviously um thrown their own. But when you say originated in Jamaica, like versions. what do you mean? Not exactly? a Jamaican, but like we were the first people that put it together. Someone, it no, nice. this guy, what is his name? His name is Victor J. Bergeron or Trader Vic. He basically got a hold of this rare nephew, seventeen-year rum from Jamaica, 
and he made the drink. So it's not that it's, it's not that it was made in Jamaica by oh. Jamaicans, but it was a drink that literally the correct rum to go in there is Jamaican rum, not just any regular rum. Okay. So, so one would think that this is like this was hu- in the forties and fifties. This was a huge propellant for Ray and nephew. So he make it and send it to the world, or what? Gone. He popularized. He made it and popularized the recipe. Oh. So. And then people start using. And then people started buying it, but of course. For people to be able to buy it, the every bar had to have J Ray and nephew one. seventeen year Jamaican mm. rum. So because of that, even though it might not have been like made in Jamaica per se, it definitely helped to boost mm. rum production here. And I don't know, even without that information, like I always just wondered, like even like how you say you don't know what a Mai Tai is. The other day I was talking about um, a Moscow Mule. Mm. Christoph didn't know what that was. So I just feel like in general, especially among the men in Jamaica, do you guys think cocktails are girls? It's just not about the cocktail life. I mean, what I think it is, is I feel like a part of the cocktail is that uh, I feel like, a part, like, first of all, I feel like it costs more money. Cocktail. But I also feel like Cocktail. that's because... <laughs> 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 That's yeah. the first off. Okay, that aside, that aside, I feel like you're paying. Apart from that, you're paying for the presentation. I feel like we Jamaicans don't care really care about that. We right. just want to drink and get drunk. The average Jamaican. Yeah. So, so then the question I have is: Do you think Jamaicans are alcoholics? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I hate how good he is. No, no, no. We have to push back. But so it's just that we we strong, so it really mess with you know white people weak. So oh god, I'm going go hey hey meeting. Oh my name is Palm and I'm a <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we bad brothers, you know what I'm saying? On one girl, we encourage everyone to go to an AA meeting. If you if it is that you think that you're an alcoholic, please please go get help. To get the help that you need. Yeah, nothing so, okay, so you're, you're talking about alcoholic as in like addicted to alcohol. No, that that that's not what I okay, meant in okay, the sense. Okay. But I feel like in like I feel like in America, as you said, Brandon, people care about the presentation. People care about the fanciness, the, 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 the bartenders that do all the it's little experience. tricks and da da da, and you get like this nice, cute. Thing, as you said to post on Instagram whereas in Jamaica I feel like we just want to get drunk yeah. so we don't really care and I guess yeah that's I, what I, I think asking. I still think it's a um, gender thing as well as the Jamaica thing as you know what I mean meaning I think girls Jamaican girls love that stuff as well mm-hmm. and they're Jamaican in it and man, male Jamaicans not really busy about that, things that like is, that is American true. males care about that stuff I my heart is not since I think so because when I went abroad, like, and I'd go to bars with like my guy friends, they none of them would be like, "Give me a Roman Coke." I mean, Not a Roman Coke, them but will, you know, but I like, like Jack, what Jack Daniels are Roman And, and I think I, I, that's right. the thing I was going to say is that I feel like it's a cultural thing because I don't know for for me at least when when I started drinking, I is my father, my grandfather pull yeah. me aside and say, "Yo, let's have a drink. Yeah, let's have a drink." Yeah. And I would be like, "All right." Daddy, I want this guy. He said, no, 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 you're not drink that. You're, you're introduced it's, to something. It's rum and rocks. Get used to it or don't drink. And yes. so that was that was my exposure mm-hmm. to them saying, all right, white rum and water. That is what you need for drink. First, I'm realizing I can't manage white rum and water. So I'm <laughs> sitting in my, sit my red <laughs> rum or, and, and water, red rum and rocks. But I feel like it's a part of it yeah. is also a cultural experience yeah. and something kind of, I guess, for at least some of the guys mm. some ah uh, you see the, the other man the elder them or your father or your grandfather this is how them drink this is what them drink i'm glad you brought that up because it kind of coincides with the whole i was thinking about a while ago because i feel like a lot of girls especially that grew up in st andrew um I have to say so. st. Andrew, so um, st. Andrew. when they turn 18 just like how we mentioned in the previous podcast we spoke about TGI culture right? and I feel like the, their first drinking experience outside of the guys who are introduced to alcohol by their fathers and grandfathers similar to Christoph, a girl's first drink is possibly her first cocktail at TGI 
and outside of Kingston that's probably just not the case because we don't know what they're exposed to down there what is their TGI and if it is that their first drinking experience is just a bar the bar don't have cocktails to offer then their experience is obviously going to be different from what another female is so it is just cultural you yeah. have a different culture in St. Andrew, you have a different culture yeah. outside of it. For me, I did not grow up in St. Andrew, I grew up in Linstead and similar to Krista, <laughs> I was given rum and water and that is how my go-to drink now is white rum and water and occasionally we put a little lime in there for sweetening it up because I don't want people to judge me. And, so I may have burned out my chest plate. And Ash, I'm sure, I'm sure you were probably way more exposed to man I drink rum and milk. Yes. And huh? Wait, I, I, I heard I heard of this. But, that, but that's rum cream. So. I listen. But but I don't think about that. The I heard about that like recently. Like, so, like, like, in the last, in the last so, couple of years. Yeah. 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 In the last I couple of years. Oh my god. Yo, what are you on? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yo, you know, put my business out for national party vision. Anyways, but yeah, like I heard about rum and milk. Couple years ago, but I, as I said, that's my grandfather that I'm, and my father and not that. But a countryman now yeah. that I'm that I'm so stable. It's, it's, it's yeah. really just a secular and divisions and exposure and you know socialization Maybe. because you really don't know what somebody else is exposed to. For me, I never grew up on cocktails. It wasn't something that was ever a consideration in my house. If my parents having a get together, it's always buckler rum and chaser. And that's it. There's no mm. mixed drink like that. My first time knowing about cocktails, obviously I see it on TV, so I know that it existed. Mm. But the chance for me to get a cocktail was, you know, when I moved to Kingston, I'm a start with places like TGI 100, wherever. Rump, punch, However, cocktail, when man. I go to these places, I really just try to see, hey, I'm going to have a cocktail just because. But my go to mm-hmm. drink would always be a white rum water and lime or the something on the rocks. Me, I feel that like we can definitely say that. Quote, cock, quote, end quote, tail is not a part of what did you say a while ago? <laughs> quote, cock, end quote, post tail <laughs> is not a part of the Jamaican culture. You understand? Yeah, I don't think it is, yeah. but it's maybe mixed drink. Maybe a man who say a mixed drink, and that's what I'm wondering if they just say mixed drink instead of cocktail. But mixed no, the reason why I don't, the re- and the reason why I say I don't count a mixed drink as a cocktail is that I feel like. A cocktail will have very specific proportions of what needs to go in there for it to be yeah. that specific cocktail. No, and I understand that, but I feel like also it could be a situation where that is just what they call a mixed drink. They know that it probably the appropriate name is cocktail. However, them just say, yo, my mm. a mixed drink and then go order something that is actually that a cocktail. And they be. don't refer to it as an apple tan and Pepsi as a mixed drink because I don't. I don't call white rum and water a mixed drink. It's white rum, water and lime. But, but I don't. I also don't consider white rum, water and lime a cocktail either. No, but that's what I'm saying. They don't call it cocktail. They call it yeah, they mixed might call drink. It a mixed drink. And what they refer to as so, because you don't call white rum, water and lime a mixed drink because you know that it is not. Yeah. And you refer to a cocktail as a cocktail. Yeah. But our next man going call it white rum, water and lime and a Long Island iced tea, which is a cocktail. Him call that a mixed like drink. Like somebody so, might say, give me mm. a. Strawberry daiquiri or a white Long Island iced tea, and he might say, "Give me a mixed drink instead of give me a." Uh, and yeah. he don't or he don't refer to it as. Cock, anyway. Well, I mean that come that I mean that come to the down to the whole cock thing, but. Um, <laughs> no, I don't even think it's that. I don't think so. Either. Girl, women probably do the same thing too. Like you know, I don't really think it's a gender thing when you come on. But I mean, re- regardless of what you call it, I per- like I just don't think that in general. Because when I think of cocktails, I think of mai tai. Amaretto so what? Mm-hmm. Um, That's all that medicine. <laughs> yeah, stuff it's like actually very nice. Moscow mules, like even sangria, sex on the beach, sex on the beach, we'll that one drivers, a long, long beach, Island 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 Island. mojitos. Like yeah. to like me, that. those are what constitutes a cocktail. And I remember like feeling a little bit out of place when I went to school in America, mm. and I would go to bars, and my friends would be like. Can I have an amaretto sour? And I used to be like, I have no idea what that tastes like. <laughs> I have no idea what that tastes like. And like yeah, and I finding out that people put like egg white in drinks and huh? those things there. Yeah, let's not yeah, get into it. If you get into like the real deep like cocktails, they like white. use egg whites and that stuff is, to like that's to a protein from. shake. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like you see things like that just don't exist out here. Or yeah. they do exist, but they're I honestly, the honestly, the the more I think about it, I feel like 
gender roles have something to play yeah. with it because I feel like a man just feel like it's too girly for go to a bar and order a cocktail. Yeah. Because mm. it, it looks girly, it sound girly, it mix up, mix up. It, it really you have your carrot come with an umbrella and a cherry on top. Yeah. That's how I feel about me being somewhere that likes drinking wine. Like I feel like you feel like I, a girl. I know I love drinking wine, but I feel like if I'm going out. With I would definitely step to your brand and I'm like, where are you? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, where are you that from? Man, man, let me I would never this carry to wine to like games now. I'm going oh, to say man. this to you in front of our listeners and in front of Christoph. Don't make Christoph bully about drinking the wine. If you feel like drink the wine, drink the wine, you know? No, but I get it. Yeah, I remember, wine is when I can have a get wine, not when we have a party. I remember one night Bradley and I went to dinner and the bartender like just gave us random drinks mm. and he gave him what did he get? I think he got like a margarita or something and one of the waitresses were like oh you must give him a margarita like that's not a man drink like that's, that's a girl drink misogyny. so she said that no <laughs> and then up? and then Bradley was like yeah give me something else because I don't really want this so the bartender asked Bradley what he wanted and Bradley said champagne Ooh, and the classy. bartender said what I thought you wanted a man drink like he literally was like man don't drink out a flute <laughs> <laughs> Flute. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like a champagne flute. That's that's the glass. Oh. So <laughs> the realization <laughs> a while ago. <laughs> so, so you I think I did flute. Stop. Yeah, the instrument. Stop. Just mm, stop. Uh, all right. So, but I feel like even like I feel like even champagne seem more manly. It is than, more manly than wine. You think so? Why are the same thing? Wine is more like like when wine and dying, more, brother. When, when Jamaican men want to feel manly, I drink champagne and drink it out of the box street. <laughs> like they both try it's not a flute. That's true. We think the first time we drink wine in my life was mostly last year. No way. We think I could be incorrect. But it's just a thing like even like when you hear about all them famous like sports players like LeBron love wine. Every oh. time I think about it, I'm like, I just can't imagine this big, huge bread I just had drink yeah. wine. Yeah. Yeah. American oh, love, love wine. wine. You know? yeah. there, there is no yeah. gender whatever division no. associated with wine in America. I think we should all or go to that wine Carmel class that teaches you all the different types. What? Carmel Anthony has a wine podcast. I have to go listen to that too. No. Imagine no, Carmel Anthony has his own like wine brewery, bro. A lot, a lot that of these crazy. You are at the But we need to expand the palette still. The boom and wife from thing, you know, really healthy. I think that's why I got, I, I, my interest in cocktails started because I was like, I feel like there's so many different combinations of flavors out there and I feel like I'm doing myself a, distur- a disservice by just getting Red Bull and wine. <laughs> but wine is so Why are you wine? drinking Red Bull with alcohol? Let's not go there. I'm really not just drinking the surface. I really don't want to drink I love it. Like, and I think that the history of wine and the different options. I think this is Red, white, and it's going to be a little bit I went to a winery once and it was, I would definitely say, top tier experience with I, it. I, I really want to. You see, the way, I, that, that the way you feel about like, getting adventurous with wine is the way I feel about getting adventurous with wine. Call me up. Oh, I would and, love that as well because I, you know, I love hard liquor. Yeah, and, and that's mm. my stuff. So, like, like hard liquor, so you know, drink wine, period. No, you see, me and wine don't work. As, as me take a sip of wine, you go straight to your. It's like go straight to yours. No, no, no. Everything. <laughs> as I was saying, what? as we take a sip of wine, the Jesus. whole room. That spin. Wine? Yes. yes. No, 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 no. Wine will mess people, me up. People I drink hard rum. No, no, no. Yo, me can, me can done a cue by me, done a cue around by myself. No problem. A sip of wine. Wine, 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 wine is juice. Wine. Is great. Crazy. Red or white wine? It don't matter. It don't matter. Any wine, the room starts spinning, brother. That is crazy. So I, I just stay away from it. It's get, get yes. yourself checked out. That me right. That's my call you off all people right here should not tell anyone to get themselves straight out what may i say wine coming like the water how much how much alcohol i've heard like 12, and you are about drink about drink, you are drink rubbing alcohol <laughs> <laughs> are <you good>? <laughs> <laughs> i've heard people you have experienced that with wine versus really just wine like how i know how men cool. can drink champagne but they can drink an entire bottle of ASO why they can't drink champagne because just, it just mashed them up champagne but, will mash me up too but have you ever champagne, tried to build up a tolerance to wine or 
I mean, and that's the thing. I don't like the taste of wine that much to mm. say, oh, I never I, keep maybe trying. Maybe you've also just never had a wine that you like. That's true. Because There's a couple. So yes. I don't like red wines. wine. I like white wine. I like, hate I red like, wine. Yeah, I like white. I white love wine. really dry red wine. Red wine I tastes like, like, like deep red wine. I don't like fruity wine. I don't like sweet wine. You see, people drink in moderation, don't drink and drink. So, in conclusion, we like mm-hmm. the Appleton new design. We're all for it. Congratulations, Appleton, on being around since the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Quite literally. And still having a brand that is as strong as it is now. And two, Jamaicans don't really have a cocktail culture, despite one of the largest cocktails in the world. Featuring one of our rooms, definitely because of cultural differences. Also, big up Jerry and nephew. Big up Jerry and nephew. Big up John Ray and his nephew Charles or something. I'm all for black power, but I'll hide it from do it. You see? White rum is a staple in Jamaican culture. And anything when we rich. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, guys, uh, remember to uh, follow us on. All the socials, Wonga Gal on Instagram, subscribe to Wonga Gal on YouTube, and yeah, can't wait for the next episode. For the Rebel Zone, and remember. Oh, yeah, do you guys have anything to promote? Remember, them gal are wicked. Final words. Wow. For the Rebel Zone, Born the Devil. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, nothing to promote, just. Check guys, wear a mask and social distance, please. For real. Because we're, we're doing that right now. Okay. Alright. See you next episode, guys.